You're listening to Minor Talk On Demand exclusively on 600 ESPN El Paso. Stay up to date with Minor Talk by downloading the free 600 ESPN El Paso mobile app. Minor Talk is presented by the Oscar Arrieta Agency, Classic Elegance Coaches, the District Pub and Kitchen, Wind Supply El Paso, and New Start Homes. Call into the show at 915-505-609 or interact with the show at 600 ESPN El Paso on social media. Here's your host, Adrian Broadus. All right, let's do it. Minor Talk is live. We're presented by the Oscar Arietta Agency. Uh, big shout out to the Oscar Arietta Agency. They joined us out at our Minor Talk pregame party out at the District West. Uh, that was before the broadcast. They gave away some signed gloves from Praise of Mayule. Uh, they gave away sunglasses. They gave away awesome seat cushions and even some military tags. So big shout out to the Oscar Arietta Agency, the presenting sponsor here on Minor Talk. Um, um, man, where do we even begin? We have so much to talk about here today. Uh, I know it will be emotional. I know it will be a long show. I know that a lot of listeners are uh, very frustrated as to what's going on within the UTEP football program. So we'll do it all. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll take your calls. We will get out to, of course, phone calls and uh, comments on social media. We will st- hang with you as long as we can here on the show. Uh, we will have Sal Montes. We will have Zeke Ali. We will have other members of 600 ESPN El Paso here with us uh, to talk about this one today. Uh, and it's a brutal loss for the Miners. There's no sugarcoating this. This was the most pivotal game of UTEP season early on, and they failed to get a victory. I mean, it's just deflating. If you're a UTEP fan, if you've been around this program for a while, if you've been a Dana Dimmel supporter or uh, you know rooted for this uh, organization and program, specifically over the past couple years, it is absolutely deflating because going into this season, there was so much hype. There was so much excitement about this UTEP team, and rightfully so. They've got uh, older players across their roster. They've got a veteran group. They've got seniors all across the board. I mean, look at all how many senior starters there are in the lineup for UTEP, yet they fall below expectations. They are now 1-4 and four going into the full stretch of Conference USA play, uh, and I have pushed the panic button. I have all the red flags raised right now with this UTEP football team because historically coming back from a one and four record and trying to even be bowl eligible even be competitive forget all of that right there this UTEP team has kind of showed us through the first four weeks who they were and tonight it was at home a place where traditionally UTEP has been good at uh, over the past three years going into this game the Miners were 12 and three at home overall with their record, yet they get uh, a huge loss today. I mean, it was just a deflating loss against UNLV, 45-28. That is the final score. And there's a lot of things to point out in this loss. Number one, you could point out the third downs in how UNLV was virtually unstoppable on third downs. 10 of 17. Before this one really uh, got out of hand, it was like 10 of 15. So those last two for UNLV, those are just in garbage time when they're just punting it away and trying to run out the clock. That's number one right there. Also, I look at the three interceptions from UTEP senior quarterback Gavin Hardison. Big time red flag right there along with the block punt. I mean, the special teams did not come out uh, to be as effective and as efficient as UTEP needed them to be. So that was a huge loss for the Miners as well, getting that block punt early into this game. You talk about the run defense, or lack thereof, allowing 306 yards on the ground to UNLV. Uh, That is uncharacteristic of the defense. That makes me think this UTEP team is maybe taking steps back when we think that, oh, well, hey, they can improve. They can get better. They can score more points on offense. They can have more efficient drives. They can have more on-field success. No, they take two steps back defensively, uh, really 
surprising there. I mean, especially considering UNLV came into this one with a freshman quarterback who hadn't made a career start under his belt, uh, and he made you know you, he had just an efficient game. He was everything he needed to do. He did everything UNLV needed him to do in order for the Rebels to win that game. Uh, you talk about their running back in Thomas, who had th- uh, four rushing touchdowns in this one, including uh, a long carry of 46 yards. You talk about Vincent Davis, who had a 56-yard rush. Uh, you talk about Courtney Reese, who also logged a rushing touchdown for UNLV. The defense was disappointing tonight for UTEP. There's no other way to put it. Aside from the turnover that Praise Amehule caused with that interception, uh, the defense was disappointing tonight. I, I didn't expect something like this to happen, especially at the Sun Bowl, especially against uh, this UTEP defense, which I deemed as a pretty good defense in Conference USA. Well, now... Um, might have to reevaluate that. And, you know, some of the other issues that are plaguing this team early on right now, it's the injuries. The injuries are starting to stack up. Today, we didn't see safety Mikel Broussard, did not see safety uh, Trajan Huey. We saw Oscar Moore, their third string uh, free safety, go out in this game. Uh, they had to play a guy who's really never had snaps at the safety at the free safety position, and uh, he had to play alongside Kobe Hilton. But beyond that, I mean, Tavita Tafuna was out in this game. Running back Mike Franklin uh, did not play. Uh, running back Dion Hankins was limited. We saw mostly Torrance Burgess throughout this game. So just a lot of different things that are kind of affecting the minors right now. And now they stand one and four overall on the season. It's, I mean, it, I, I'm, I'm a realist when I talk about UTEP football, and I felt like I've been fair on both sides, both sides of the ball, when I'm talking positively toward UTEP and giving them their flowers in their lone victory earlier this season against Incarnate Word, kind of looking at the silver lining even in their losses against Power 5 teams, but really fixating. I fixated on this game in particular against UNLV as that must-win pivotal game for the Miners. And what do they do? They disappoint fans. They disappoint 28,000-plus who showed up in attendance. By the way, 28,000 for a team that is 1-3 and three, entered this one with a 1-3 and three record. Wasn't good to start off with. And the fans stuck around. They were loud. They were ready to go. And uh, the UTEP football team just, you know, flat out disappointed this UTEP crowd. And I, I thought that the fans were excellent. Um, you know, I, I got some comments on social media that came my way. They were like, wow, the, the stadium looks half full exactly it's half full I mean this is the Sun Bowl that seats almost 50,000 and the Miners getting 28 when they're one and three yeah that's something to actually celebrate about I mean talk about the opener against Incarnate Word having 30,000 at that one and then 28,000 here what more does the football program want in terms of support uh, for a team that doesn't necessarily hasn't necessarily earned that support if they had beaten the likes of Northwestern or if they had beaten Eaton or upset Arizona, then maybe we would have a totally different conversation about attendance. But I had a lot of people in my mentions throughout the game talking to me about how they were disappointed in the attendance. Disappointed? The only people who would be disappointed are outsiders who don't understand what UTEP is as far as attendance goes, what, where they stand in Conference USA for attendance, and all those things. So you capitalize on these early season games if you're the Miners, and man, the rest of the games are just going to be uphill battles from here. I mean, UTEP right now is 1-4. and four. Uh, I look at the rest of their schedule, just knowing what we know from five games watching this UTEP football team, where are the victories? Where are they going to find some wins under their belt, whether it's at home or on the road? I don't care. Conference USA is coming, and UTEP is just simply not in a a good position whatsoever. This is as bad as I thought it could get uh, at this point into the season. And uh, but I, I, no one. I mean, really, I did not see this happening before the season started. I thought this team would at least go six and six to close out the season and make a bowl game, knowing all the expectations around the program, knowing all the seniors who are back on this team. Yet they just disappointed fans tonight in front of twenty eight thousand plus and lost forty five to twenty eight. Hey, we're gonna take your phone calls here on the show uh, throughout Minor Talk. Our telephone number nine. 9- 915-505-6009. We are presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency.
agency. And we have some news. We've got some new sponsors here on Minor Talk as well. Want to give a big shout out to DK Allon. Uh, they are back with us here on Minor Talk. In fact, they will be giving away a $25 gas card to the caller of the show. So, um, Everybody who calls in today, they are registered uh, automatically for caller of the show, and the winner will get a chance to win the uh, $25 gift card, gas gift card from DK Allon, and we're really excited about that. Uh, We have a new award here on the show, the Stanley Steamer, uh, and it's the Steamroller of the Game, brought to you by the Stanley Steamer of El Paso and Las Cruces, who are locally owned and operated since 1947. They've served served homes, they've served businesses all across the nation, and they're trusted by generations to clean your carpet, upholstery, air ducts, hardwood, and the grout, rugs, and more. Uh, That is Stanley Steamer, who's going to bring our steamroller of the game. Uh, I know there's a lot of eye rolls going on right now when it comes to these awards, but hey guys, uh, we're paying the bills here on this show. We're very proud of all the people who choose to uh, work with us here on Minor Talk, and uh, we'll give them some love here here no matter what i will just say this there's going to be a lot of um varying opinions throughout tonight minor talk is going to get heated uh let's let's just do it i mean let's rip the band-aid off and let's just start things off here as we continue our telephone number 915-505-6009 i'll get sal's thoughts as soon as the utep football broadcast is officially over i'll get zay's thoughts as soon as he is back from the press conference going on right now uh with players and coaches but first let's get out to the phone lines and let's do it 915 505 Six zero zero nine. If you want to talk some UTEP football, let's go out to Minetto, who's going to get things started for us here on the phone lines first. Minetto, good evening. What's going on, man? Good evening, gentlemen, to all three of you. Um, first of all, I waited. Uh, this is my first time calling in uh, during this season. Um, what I want to say today is, after you know, being you know very diehard and going to practices at UTEP. Um, and seeing the parent of Aaron Jones, you know, always talking to Kugler about her wanting best, um, be, wanting the best for Aaron, and to be in a position to where he's at now, I want to challenge the parents of these football players to go to practice, to ask questions, to address their concerns, um, to back their kids up. Um, I, I haven't heard of, I haven't seen any parents at, at practice, you know, with this new um, coaching staff. But I will let you know, in my experience, when I would see Aaron Jones um, and, and his father at the practices, Miss Jones was all up on Kugler and, you know, always asking, why is her son getting hurt? You know, why are they protecting him? And, and she was, you know, it was a football mom. But I want to challenge, and I hope that the parents of these UTEP players are listening, and I challenge you to want better for your kids, not for the fans, not for the coaching staff, but to go there and at least address your concerns and show how much you care about your kids than than having a hyped-up or six seasons with only 18 wins and everything losses. My heart is broken. I do not attend the football games anymore. Um, I, you know, I make comments. Do I follow the minor footballs? Yes. But I think now it's, it's all about this player meeting stuff, you know, here and there. It's time for the parents to get involved because they entrust these coaching staff with their kids to be put in a position to graduate, to do well in sports. And as you've said, Adrian, and, and you, you finally, you know, said, I'm going to be realistic. The panic button, this is horrible. But if these parents of these football players do not go and speak to this coaching staff, then you know what? They're, there's, there's the rest of the season is going to be like this. You're going to have that quarterback from El Paso, from Pebble Hills. If the coaching staff leaves, that doesn't guarantee that this kid's going to stay here. 
Hey, Mineto, I appreciate the phone call, man. I understand your passion. I understand your frustrations, and I appreciate the phone call, and I appreciate your thoughts. I am interested, and I, I, I'm fascinated by the fact that you brought up and you steered the ship toward the parents and said, hey, look, parents need to start demanding better from Coach Dimmel. I look at it two ways. Number one, I look at it, if you're a parent of a player who's on this team, you should not be involved whatsoever. I mean, let your kid, he's an adult, let him be involved, let him make his own decisions. If you're playing at this D1 level, at the college level, you're old enough, mature enough to make decisions on your own. You know what's best for your own life. And as a parent, I'm not, well, as uh, somebody who hears a lot of stories from parents secondhand, I'm not a fan of parent involvement at the college level. Not a fan whatsoever. Not a fan of them subtweeting on, on social media and getting mad about players, calling out players, calling out coaches. Not a fan of that. Um, I'm also not a fan of people uh, and parents maybe calling in this show and also voicing their displeasure about uh, UTEP on this show. I'm, I'm really not. I, we've we've kind of instigated it at times and we've encouraged it at other times, but overall, does it do good for the team? No. Does it mean something's bad? Absolutely yes. Now the flip side to this. Now, if you are a parent out there and you, uh, at, you know, you have a player on a t- on this UTEP team and you're frustrated, my second part. If you feel uh, compelled to where you need to call uh, Dimmel or you need to address something with the coaching staff. Talk to them in person or give them a call. Don't do this over social media. Don't do this over text. I'm not a fan of that whatsoever. And so, I mean, hey, look, this is just how I see it. I mean, Sal, Zay might have a totally different opinion than me, but that's where frustrations boil at a certain point. And I get it. If you're a parent, you're you're kind of like a parent and a fan. You want to see what's best for your kid, but you also want this team to win. Um, and at the same time, that's not happening right now, but there's different ways to address it. So interesting angle you chose there, Mineto, but nonetheless, I appreciate the phone call. Our telephone number, 915-505-6009 to get things started. 600 ESPN El Paso everywhere on social media. Let's go out to Diego, who's joining us next on the phone lines. Diego, good evening, man. What's going on? Hey, Adrian. Uh, I just had to call in. I went to the game tonight, and I couldn't be more disgusted. And I've come, Adrian, I don't mean to, to jump in here quickly. I don't know if you had something to set me up here, but I just got to come in here. I've been, I've been realistic. I've tried to be rational. I've tried to be fair to the coaches. There's only one conclusion from tonight. you got to fire Dana Dimmel. I don't know the financial implications. I don't know what, if UTEP can afford it or if there's some kind of buyout. you got to fire this guy. He's had, what, five years now brought us, six years? How many years has he had here? Yeah, six years in the system. That's right. This is and his sixth got- year at the helm. You, you could excuse last year. You could, you could, as a UTEP fan, come up with every reason in the book to excuse last season, and we come back. We got the veteran offensive line. We got the veteran quarterback. We got the receivers in place. Tyron Smith comes back. Deion Hankins. You got the veteran defenders. There's no reason this team shouldn't be succeeding. They've got the level of talent is so much higher than, you know, five to ten years ago. And what was Gavin Hardison doing tonight? He was holding on to the ball. He was taking sacks. It felt like the offensive line couldn't stop the, the pass rush at all. And it was just a brutal game, Adrian. It was a brutal game. 1-4, season's over. Dana Dimble's talking about winning a conference championship. It's laughable. He's got to go. Hey, De- uh, Diego, real quick, on the Gavin Hardison thought, um, I'm still seeing on my social media feed right now, There, there's like photo, uh, videos of Gavin just zipping it to guys like Jeremiah Ballard, 11 minutes left in the yeah. fourth quarter. Game is still in some kind of distance, and he throws an absolute dime to the back uh, right end of the corner to Jeremiah Ballard for a touchdown. Those throws, I think, are what frustrates uh, frustrate fans like you and uh, other people so much because you see the potential, you see what he could do, but then he just doesn't do it. You see it there, and you see the arm talent. I've heard you know you and others talk about how there's NFL scouts looking at him, and so you see the talent there, and you see the arm ability. But as far as the full quarterback package of, you know, reading the defense, reading the pass rush, taking the easy pass. Yeah, it's one thing to fling the ball downfield and and throw a great pass, and that's great, and I love that. But just the whole package isn't there with Hardison. And I hate to say that because I feel like I've been such a believer in this guy for, you know, year after year, and it's just not there. And, we you know, we – we just see him getting, you know, he's, he's hanging on to the ball. He's not just chucking the ball downfield. He's taking sacks. 
and it's just brutal. And, and I'll say this too. I mean, it's, it's challenging seeing Deion Hankins. I, you know, I assume he's limited out there because he's not getting the ball. They're really leaning on Burgess who's, you know, had a good year, but you know, not having Hankins out there and Hardison uh, stinking it up, man, it's just tough. Yeah, Diego, I hear you, man. Uh, Hey, I appreciate the phone call, man. Thanks for weighing in. I understand your frustrations, and uh, I hear where you're coming from. Uh, You say uh, Dana Dimmel has to go, and so we'll we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening. Hey, uh, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, Zay is in the house. He just got here. Sal is done with the broadcast. It's the full edition of Minor Talk, full swing. Uh, Coming up next, we've got Josh on the lines. We've got George waiting for us as well. Stay with us. Minor Talk continues. One line available. If you'd like to weigh in, give us a call right now. 915-505-6009. We're presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. They are available online, oscaradietaagency.com, for your home, your auto, your life insurance, or your commercial business insurance needs. That's the Oscar Arieta Agency, and you can trust them uh, with uh, here on on Minor Talk as we continue. Let's uh, take a time out. When we come back, more Minor Talk talk as we continue here on 600 ESPN El Paso. All right, welcome back. Minor Talk continues. We are live along with Sal Montes, Zay Galindo. I'm Adrian Bratis. We are taking you through Minor Talk here on the show. Full phone lines. As we get things started, uh, I'll get to Zay. I'll get to Sal in just a second. Let's burn through calls. Josh is joining us first. He's been patiently waiting with us here on the show. We're presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. Josh, good evening. What's going on? Oh, not much, you know. Um, Heartbroken, of course, as usual. Um, I guess you could say I'm in a very abusive relationship with the Utah football program. Um, you know, I'm just getting sick and tired of the same song and dance from, from coach, coach Dimmel. Um, I think to, to be honest with you, I, I think the fans of UTEP need to book out the rest of the season. Don't even show up. Um, I have tickets, you know, to watch UTEP versus basketball state. I'm not even going to show up. It, it, there's no point. I'm not going to keep on showing up to, to the stadium week after week, supporting them and getting my heart broken. And just watch them lose. So I'm I'm pretty much done for the season. Josh, I'm, I'm uh, who are you done with most? If you had to point the finger of blame, who are you pointing the finger at blame at? Um, I would, I would, I would blame Coach Dimmel. He needs to go. He, you know, we've only been to one bowl appearance in what the five six years that he's been here. You know, that's not that's to, to be honest, with you, that's uncalled for. You know, a lot of other programs wouldn't take that, but this is also UTEP, a historically bad program. So I always put that in the same context, Josh. This is a program that hasn't seen success. I mean, really. I mean, when is the last – 1967 is the last bowl victory. Uh, We're talking about a share of a conference championship in 2000. We're talking about a 10-win season uh, in the 80s uh, led by head coach Bob Stoll at the time. And that's about it. I mean, a a bowl appearance here or there, but it's a – brutal experience you talked about that to begin your call it's a brutal experience just to be a UTEP football fan for all these years yeah you know it's it's year after year you know like I said I'm just trying to get my heart broken point blank um me personally I think UTEP does not deserve to be a division one I think it should they should be knocked down to to a division two then maybe we'll actually win some games actually go somewhere Josh, um, a lot of other fans are as disgruntled and are giving as as hot of takes as that for sure after this loss. So I appreciate your phone call, Josh. I understand your frustration. I wonder how many other fans will do the same and not show up for the remainder of the season just knowing uh, what's ahead for this UTEP football team or what's not ahead, I should say. Miners are now 1-4 and four on the season. Josh, I appreciate the phone call. Thank you so much for patiently waiting. We'll get to George. We'll get to Augustine in just 
just a second. I just want to mention our phone line, 915-505-6009 to get into the broadcast. 600 ESPN El Paso everywhere on social media. That's 600 ESPN El Paso uh, on social media as well. We'll uh, bring up the co-host of the show, Sal Montes, here in just a second. But our other co-host, Zay Galindo, is here in studio with us. Zay, you got a chance to watch this entire game. You got a chance to also experience the press conference after the fact. Uh, you tell me, Miners lose tonight in a, in a resounding fashion. 45-28 is their loss. Disappointing fashion, I should say, to UNLV at home. Give me your thoughts. Yeah, this was a very disappointing game to watch. I mean, so many opportunities, missed opportunities, unforced errors. It's the same story with UTEP football, sadly. And, um, you know, just to be one and four, being in this position year six for Dana Dimmel, you know, you got to feel some pressure now. You know, if he wasn't feeling pressure before, you got to feel pressure now. And, um, you know, the, they say the team's still together. You know, Torrance Burgess Jr., he talked about in the post game how, you know, they're, they're going to be resilient. They had a long summer together, that they're going to stick together, how they still believe they can win the conference championship but man I mean it's going to be tough it's it's going to be tough to keep this squad together especially after a loss like this yeah I don't know how anybody can say conference championship after this one and Sal I'll bring you on because we've been doing this uh since this team was yeah. one and 11 uh under head coach Dana Dimmel and we're doing it now when they're one and four it seems like the same mm. thing uh, as they took steps forward in their program as they started to develop an identity in recruiting in this program. Um, I've never really been the one to rush to firing a coach. I'm also not, I'm still on the same uh, path, but I'm not the kind of guy who says fire in the middle of the season. But um, this kind of feels like, and I'm being realistic here, this kind of feels like the beginning of the end. Whatever kind of end you all want to talk about, if it's a resignation, if it's a firing, if it's a buyout, if it's maybe proving me wrong. It just kind of feels like the beginning of the end, Sal. Maybe that's a rush to judgment uh, to some people out there. Some people could agree with with us, disagree with us. That's how I feel right now. You know what? Uh, I think um, I don't want to say this is the beginning of the end. I think this kind of solidifies it, in my opinion. I think you saw flashes of this uh, basically in the loss to um, to Jacksonville State. Yeah, they come back and beat Incarnate Word. Big whoop though. It's it's incarnate word still. It's not a it's not a FBS opponent who are your counterparts. You you can't even win games against those guys on a consistent basis. So I think this loss kind of solidifies it for a lot more people. But in all honesty, Adrian another day where El Paso shows up for UTEP and UTEP Man. doesn't do the same for the fans. Yeah, great point there, Sal. I'm just going to really quick run through some of the key plays that I thought just swung this game on uh, different levels. First off, the punt block was just awful. I mean, how does this happen with this UTEP special teams group? It feels like one week they're on fire. Next week they're literally setting the house on fire. And it's just never, I mean, when they just have a no, like a turnover free game and when they have nothing special happen in, in special teams that's when I actually think it's okay like just don't give me the turnover the the uh, random turnover that happens uh, for this special teams group because that is what really deflates a team and you looked at the sideline early on it was like man they were, it was like they already were counting themselves out of it but they dug themselves out of an early hole um, they tied it up pretty quickly I'll go to the end of the uh, first half which I know a lot of people want to bring up um UTEP had an interception. Gavin Hardison threw an interception. UNLV capitalized on short field position. Uh, They went up 21-14, and then they got a touchdown right after that as well. Go up 28-14 to go into the half. I thought that was significant right there. Then, later on in the third quarter, the Miners put together a nice drive. They're within striking distance, just within one touchdown, and UNLV puts together an 18-play drive. They go 5-for-5 on third down. They're in a third and goal situation, and then what happens? Praise a Mayhule gets an interception. Momentum has completely swung over to UTEP. What does the offense do? This is where I, I have all my asterisks written right here. Three and out offensively. Three and out after being within striking distance, after trying to sway the momentum in your favor. No, they were not able to do so. And that's a product of a bad offense right now. And that's just what UTEP has, a bad offense, eh? 
Yeah, and, um, you know, they asked Tyrese Knight this question, you know, in the postgame presser. They asked, you know, was that deflating, them going three and out? He said no, that wasn't deflating. They're getting a turnover, you know, that really fired up that defense. But, I mean, I just I can't see that. I can't see that, you know, after that three and out, UNLV drives down the field and they score. You know, when you get a turnover like that, the momentum is all on your side. I mean, I, I, I talked to you, you know, that sideline, it felt so great. It felt, you know, they, they were in it again, you know, they, it felt felt like something that you can pinpoint that exact play when you're down the road possibly competing for a conference championship but you know three now it was just a very uncreative drive and uh, just a very disappointing part of this game Sal what are Man. some of the plays that uh, stood out to you that just kind of swung this game um what swung this game, I would say it was um, right after the, the pick from Praise. You know, yeah. it was their first stop on a third down in a very long time. Happens on a third and goal situation. Praise uh, kind of alluded to it as well. I think it was against the Jacksonville State game or Incarnate Word. I can't remember specifically, but he said, hey, next time something like that comes my way, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to take that. And he was able to recognize the play and, uh, you know, just – was a dog on that play seriously and, and yeah. finally praise making his uh, his presence felt big time in the game and um you know they're unable to capitalize on that we talked about this over at the district you know on the minor talk uh, pregame show how hey they can get these turnovers but they gotta be able to keep their defense on the sideline for a bit longer they went right back out there in the game where they're already struggling yeah you called it earlier today sal um i'm just gonna pat myself on the back guys i called this game last week i i I called UNLV winning in a um, a pretty commanding fashion, and that's you know fortunately what ended up happening for the miners. I, I didn't have faith in this UTEP offense, and uh, again they let me down. But also the defense let me down. I mean, I thought it, I, I thought the around, defense would yeah. would have been better today. I agreed with Coach Dimmel's post game comments where he was saying how he was shocked about how they were allowing so much on the ground for UNLV. That's the surprising thing to me. And you know what, too, Adrian, I think um, the disappointment goes all around. There, there were spots where, you know, some sides of the ball did solid, and they faltered for two quarters, basically. I mean, the offensive line was atrocious in the first oh, half. Yeah, and Hardison couldn't even see, you know, a couple seconds of air in front of him. That's how crazy the UNLV defensive line was in the first half. And then in the second half, they start to pick it up. But all the while, um, you know, the defensive uh, line for UTEP wasn't getting pressure. Secondary was allowing some spots. Then eventually they get some deflections. But the if there's blame, it's definitely all around. It was a bad team performance. Zay, your thoughts? Yeah, you know, Sal talks about all the you know the four sacks in the first half. That was bad, and um, I think some of those were coverage sacks. I think you know Gavin Hardison holding onto the ball just way too long. I think his pocket awareness, you know, his sense of pressure. It's just it it hasn't been great. It hasn't been great. You know, uh, the whole time he's been at UTEP, and that's just you know. It's disappointing, you know. There's been not much development in that er area, and you know, to be honest, any area of his game, you know, since that 2021 season, which is tough to see, you know, when you've been in college that long, and uh, obviously you can point to the play calling, but it's just it's rough to see a guy like that with that much experience, and, you know, talent, base arm talent. I mean, he has a lot of arm talent to just go stagnant. You know, there was one time where he was in the back of the end zone and he threw like a 60-yard pass kind of effortlessly, and I'm thinking, that's it. I mean, you have the highs and lows with Gavin Hardison. He can throw these passes like that touchdown pass he threw to Jeremiah Ballard in the right corner of the end zone that just looked perfect, crisp pass. It dime, yeah. And it, it was just these excellent passes that he can muster up. And then he has those where he's reading his receiver, he's reading his target throughout the entire progression. He throws it, and it gets intercepted. We thought... We we saw three of those today, and uh, that's just the reality with Gavin Hardison. You get the good, you get the bad, you get the ugly sometimes, unfortunately. Hey, let's keep the phones moving. Our telephone number, 915-505-6009. A lot of people texting in trying to get on the show, so let's uh, burn through some calls, and uh, then we'll free up some phone lines. George is on the phones with us first. Jo uh, George, thank you so much for patiently hanging with us. Uh, your thoughts on this game tonight? Well, as, as disappointed as I was, there was some, some bright spots to the game. I think we could have come back. Uh, unfortunately, three interceptions and a lot of, a lot of uh, unforced errors uh, just limited this team 
to 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 go out and produce the way they should have. And and one of the things I, I stands out to me, Adrian, is the lack thereof of, of uh intensity from the coaching staff. From from the player's point of view, if you have a lackadaisical uh coach that's not uh, you know, hyping you up, getting you getting you going, you know, I, I saw the sideline when that turnover happened and then I was expecting uh, the offense to reward the defense, you know, one hand, uh, you know, helping the other. And, you know, that has to be demoralizing. That has to be, uh, you know, uh, take the winds out of your sails as a defense goes. You know, why am I going to uh, give the offense the ball and, and, and have them just go three and out? You know, it just, it's one disappointing thing after another, but Here's my butt. I am not uh, one of those fans that, you know, they win and I'm in. Regardless of anything, I, I bleed orange. It doesn't matter whether they win or lose. I'm going to be there day in, day out. It's not the kids' fault that the coaching is, is subpar. I mean, these kids try, and and having that kind of atmosphere is, is very contagious. And, and it just – I see these kids, they want to play good. They want to be out there – they just need the coaching. And, I mean, honestly, like, like Zay said and everybody said, Hardison has regressed. Instead of getting better, he's gotten worse. Three interceptions in this game, you know, that could have been prevented. One of them was uh, towards the end of the second half uh, when we were going into the second half. Uncalled for it. There was no need for him to throw the ball. He could have ran and gotten the first down. Instead, he, he overthrew the, the receiver into an interception. And isn't that pretty uh, common for Gavin Hardison, George? Isn't that something that he continuously does is kind of throw into coverage, throw where he's looking. And just, uh, you know, for defenses, they can feast on his turnovers. And I feel like when they happen, it's almost like a mind thing for the entire team. It, it probably messes with the defense. You saw how UNLV was able to swiftly score as soon as uh, he threw that uh, first interception in the second quarter. And, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is he's just making way too many mistakes that hurt UTEP. I talked about it earlier this week in an article. They ha- uh, Hardison has to be the hero for this team because they don't have durability at the running back position like they thought they had to start the year. They also have taken a step back in uh, terms of talent with their wide receivers. Their tight ends aren't the same as last year in Trent Thompson. Their fullback isn't the same like last year in James Tupo. So, um, yeah, and, and it feels like the offensive line has regressed. I, I, I keep asking this question, and it's never, um, it's never agreeing with me. It's always like, oh, no, 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 the offensive line will get there, but um, or it's playing fine. But I, I just don't see it. I'm, I've been disappointed by the offensive line. It was evident today by the three sacks. It was also displayed by uh, less than 100 rushing yards for UTEP. So that's also one of those things that's pretty disappointing. Uh, our telephone number here on the show, 915-505-6009. People are trying to get in, man. I just dropped that call from George, and I appreciate the phone call, George. Thanks for weighing in. And the line compl- uh, just instantly rang. Let's uh, let's continue to move through calls so more people can jump in to the show. Let's go to Augustine, who's calling in on the program. Oh, Augustine. Uh, go ahead, my friend. And you ha- you can have a field day. No, no, no. I, I just want to say so. So Adrian, Sal, and uh, is a so after Dana Dimmel gets fired or, or ends the year, um, who should UTEP look for? Because I mean, it's more than more than obvious that he will not get a contract renewal. Uh, he will not get picked up because Grant. I mean, like the last caller said, um, basically no one on the team has actually improved. Everybody has regressed. That's tall tale sign of a bad coaching staff. So who do we want in? Do we want – what do we want? Who does – you know, who does center get in? Uh, that's my biggest question. I mean, it, mm. it, to, or in order not to break those hearts. Okay, well, I'll ask our brain trust here because I, I have a longer-winded answer to this, and I think there's a lot of ways to a- answer this question. Sal, if there was to be a coaching change at the end of the year, and good call, Augustine. I appreciate the phone call, and I appreciate the question. It's a candid question, and I think if we're speaking real here on the show, uh, we should talk some real options and you know just philosophies. Sal, we saw a coach uh, come in Sean Cooper 
Kugler, who had NFL coaching experience, things didn't work out. Dana Dimmel's in year six right now. Mm-hmm. Who knows what ends up happening after this year? Things aren't looking good right now. But I'll say this with Dana Dimmel, he came from an offensive coordinator position that he held at Kansas State and had success with the Wildcats as an offensive coordinator uh, for uh, for a long time with Bill Self. Or excuse me, uh, you know, over there at Kansas State with Bill Snyder. Bill Self, what's wrong with me? Wrong Kansas there. Uh, and wrong sport there, Zay. I'm, <laughs> I'm already ready for basketball. You saw my tweet. Uh, Sal is answering a phone call, but I'll ask you again, Sal. Philosophy yeah. for uh, y- your – if UTEP was ever to get that next coach, if they were to move on from Dana Dimmel, who, mm. what kind of, what kind of uh, coach – philosophy would you want young uh, experienced somebody who has coaching experience somebody who's a master recruiter where do you prioritize your coach you know what I think um, as far as me would I'll tell you what I would like and then I'll let you know kind of what the what the pulse is like when it comes to social media okay I, I think for me it would be somebody who can recruit because at the end of the day you you, you got to bring dogs to the team you have to you know what I mean and UTEP has a couple of them but, you know, just to have, uh, you know, star after star after star come through, I think that's what fans want. If you're not going to go out there and win at a high level, have some high-flying plays in the meanwhile. So that that's number one. I would like to see a, a big-time recruiter. But as far as, um, as far as what the pulse is like, I think people are, are looking for a young guy. And, and one of the biggest examples of it is G.J. Kinney, uh, a guy who killed it here against UTEP uh, with Tulsa uh, while we're at it, right? But I think that's what the fans are going for. Uh, but before I send it back to you guys, Augustine called back in and uh, we got to give a shout out to his girlfriend Adeli so you are the, the bravest woman in the world Oh, man. I had to let that one breathe a second so I could uh, uh, process that one mentally. Uh, Zay, what's your philosophy in hiring a coach? Yeah, you know, I've thought about this, and it's it's pretty easy for me. Someone with Texas high school football connections, that's that's first off, off the bat. Someone young, innovative, that's willing to take a risk. You know, hey, you know, in this day and age, you have to take risks to win, right? You can't just go out there and play conservative and get five and seven, this and that and the third, right? You need someone who's going to take risks. Uh, make use of the transfer portal, um, you know, just a young, innovative mind. And obviously, you know, guys like Mac Lefwich come to mind. Um, you know, you dropped 77 points the other day as an offensive coordinator. But um, anybody around, you know, that, that age range, someone young, Texas high school football connections can recruit, just like Sal said, and um, willing to take risks because that's what you need to win here. Yeah, I think that's interesting, too. I mean, the risk part of that, about it. But I, I just want to preface this, okay? Philosophies have been thrown out there by Sal and Zay. I want to just say this. The UTEP football head coaching job is very hard. This And it's also not very desirable. And that's just the harsh reality. This is a hard place to win at. This is a place where football has always been historically bad at. This is also a university or an athletic department that lacks resources like other group of five schools can tap into, that other group of five schools can uh, t- you know uh, benefit off of. Facilities are not at the same level as some of their other competitors out there and that is what they have to recruit against all the time oh not to mention by the way El Paso is in West Texas which is far away from the other big cities in Texas so when you're trying to recruit Texas you also have to tell that recruit hey jump on a plane and get here in a couple hours and then we'll uh, have you and host you for this visit but the point I mean look we all know how great El Paso is but the national level sometimes they have different opinions on this city or just this university in itself and they think oh UTEP football why why would I why would I go there and unfortunately that is the brand that UTEP has right now on their football side of things that is why I think it's an uphill battle for any coach so I'm just I'm just putting that out there it wasn't Sean Kugler who had success uh, with this program. Mike Price had spurts of success early into his tenure as head coach. And Dana Dimmel, from what we're seeing right now, he had success midway through by going to a bowl game. 
And uh, to get back to that point, is it's an uphill battle uh, for this program, and that's just kind of the bottom line. Hey, let's keep things moving here on a minor talk, 915-505-6009. Thank you to Paul, to Cruz, uh, and also to Carl for patiently waiting here with us on the phone lines. Let's keep things moving. Uh, coming up next, it's Paul who's joining us on the phone lines right now. UNLV defeats UTEP 45-28. Paul, good evening. What's going on, man? Hey, good evening, guys. Great show, like always. Uh, enjoy listening. Hey, appreciate um, it, Paul. I agree with all the points you just made about UTEP being a really hard place to be successful. I mean, history speaks for itself. Uh, I'm in my mid-50s. I've been going to minor games since, like, the late 70s. And I'm not telling – or, like, I guess what I'm saying, every fan has to do what's best for them. So I'm not going to say boycott or go to the games. That's a personal decision that we all have to make. But I'm like the uh, one of your earlier callers. I'm checked out too. I just can't do this anymore because nothing is going to change if we keep going out. And I'm not – part of me doesn't like to say this because I know, I know the kids are trying and it's not really their fault because just – the, the leaders in charge just are, are really bad. I actually think they've lost the team. I, I don't see the effort, like, maybe at the beginning of the season. I think the players feel like the fans. They get the vibe. They're frustrated. They're like, here we go again. Here we go again. It's the same thing every week. It's the turnovers. It's penalties. It's just, you know, you have to blame someone, I hate to say, but it's the head coach. He's, he's the guy that's getting paid. He's the, the leader. It's just like... I'm I'm done. I'm not gonna go to any more games this year. Uh because that's my way of letting the president and the athletic director know you gotta change this because this is ridiculous. Now, well, who should we get in here? The perfect example and I've been saying it for a long time is like you said, the the coach at Texas State he used to be an incarnate word. That's how you need to do it. You need to bring in guys from the lower level, one double A and give them an opportunity if they become successful and leave in a couple of years to a bigger job because I know UTEP can't afford to pay, that's fine. We can't bring in, you know, old coaches. We need to bring in young guys because I think the players relate better to younger coaches. And, you know, let them bring in their staff. Like with Texas State, is awesome. I, for years, wanted UTEP to hire the coach at Sam Houston. I think his name is Keeler. I don't know if we ever had offered him the job. He won a national championship at his division a couple of years ago. So, I mean, you're just going to have to go from that. We don't have the money, but let's give the opportunity to assistant coaches, maybe at a lower level, and let them, you know, try to prove themselves. It just, it's got to change. And if we just keep doing the same old stuff, nothing's going to change. So that's yeah. really all I have to say. Hey, I appreciate the phone call, Paul. Thank you so much for weighing in and uh, and listening here with us on Minor Talk. I appreciate uh, your thoughts and uh, what you had to bring to the table. Uh, guys, any thoughts on, on his call? Anything that you'd like to add or, or are we burning through calls? Let's keep it going. Yeah, let's let's keep things moving. 915-505-6009. We got a bunch of calls to still get to. Let's keep things moving. Next up on the phone lines, it's Cruz. Cruz, who's joining us next. Cruz, good evening. What's going on, man? Good evening. How are you doing today, sir? Cruz, I'm hanging in, man. You always have some good calls. Uh, fire away. Well, um, um, first off, I think you're talking about my father. My father... Uh, oh, he's also before. Cruz. Okay, so this is Cruz Jr. All right, Cruz, what's going on? <laughs> exactly. In fact, actually, I heard him the other night. I'm surprised by that. But no, no, um, you know... Um, I graduated from the university many years ago. I was there um, in the marching band during the Gary Nord years, Mike Price, um, many, many years ago. Um, the gentleman prior to me brought up a good point about the head coach, um, someone young. I think that's a that's a, a great thing, to be honest with you. Um, I think I think the athletes would uh, relate better to a younger coach who's up and coming, um, who we can motivate them and get them going. Um, I think one of the biggest problems right now with Demo is um, – Hardison, he has shown flashes of what he can do. But Hardison is your typical, he's more of a pocket passer, and Demo's used to coaching guys who scramble and run the ball. Um, kind of like that kid. Um, I think he coached this one kid, something Klein. Yeah, I Colin know, Klein. Kansas. Shout out yeah. to uh, Kansas State. Yeah, Colin Klein for sure. And then that's the typical Demo QB. Um, and Hardison, not, not trying to bash the kid, um, 
like I said, he's shown flashes of what he can do, but he's not that typical Dana Dimmel QB. Um, and I think maybe maybe Dimmel is having trouble coaching this kid because he doesn't have that type of experience coaching a pocket passer. Um, but um, going back to other conversations that were held earlier, I'm, I know it's a personal choice, but I'm still going to support UTEP as much as I can. I've been supporting them. Um, I started attending the university in 2002 and graduated in 2006, uh, many, many years ago. Um, and I continue to support them even when I left El Paso and came back. Um, but I, I feel uh, we need to continue supporting this team because you know, kids are trying their hardest and, you know, they deserve they deserve better. So. Well, Cruz, I appreciate the phone call. I think there's a lot of minor fans like you who are disappointed, they're fed up in what's going on, but they also will continue to support. And that's, you know, that's the bottom line of being a UTEP fan. I mean, if you're a true UTEP fan and you're supporting week in and week out and also disappointed, well, hey, I, you're, you know, more power to you, man. Um, hang in there. That's all I have to say. Hang in there. My pops, who's, uh, you know, he's, he's mid 50s as well. He's been watching UTEP football uh, his entire life. And he's, uh, you know, some of the previous callers were talking about the bad 70s. I mean, he was he's always talks about how bad UTEP football was then. But really, a couple bright spots, handful of bright spots since uh, 1967 winning a bowl game. And that's just the sad reality of being a UTEP football fan uh, here in El Paso. Let's keep it moving. Let's uh, let's go to the phone lines. 915-505-6009. One line available. If you've been trying to weigh in, 915-505-6009 to get in on the broadcast. Let's go to Carl, who's joining us next. Carl, good evening. I hope you're feeling better, man. What's going on? Uh, well, it's, I've heard the comments, and they basically haven't changed from, you know, five, six years. But I've I've been watching UTEP when it was Texas Western, and uh, it was there we go. very good back in those days sometimes. The it Flying Miners, I think. How about that? Yeah, uh, but let me let me ask you, what if, why don't we have any more team speed? Uh, Las Vegas outran us last night. They can't, I mean, t- tonight. They ran around the ends like there were no ends there at all sometimes. I, I so just, I have I, I have just, two answers to that one. I think they've taken a bit of a step back for skill position players on offense compared to last year. And I also think defensively, uh, today you saw that, hey, they're missing a handful of starters. Uh, they've had injuries come their way defensively, but they're also not executing defensively as they have in the past. So today was shocking. I mean, Carl, I'll tell you, you watch a lot of UTEP football. I know you're a, you're a diehard UTEP fan. Milkman tells me all the time. But well, I, I, al- I always watch this team and I expect good defense from this program and tonight was just uh, uh, you know shocking to quote Dana Dimmel it was shocking to see uh, UNLV run all over that UTEP defense well you know we did we, they, we gave Cal we didn't Cowling decided to go to Arizona and he's a first crack first man playing over there and we lost him said we can't lose guys like that yeah, I hear you. And they, they've done a good job of keeping all the others, uh, all the other guys who could hit the portal. They really have. But uh, at the same time, you're right. I mean, losing star players like that, that's where it hurts. And we only had a couple of guys that could equal the speed of the team tonight. They they caught them a couple of times. But when they came around the end, if they, once they made that turn, if, got, if they had been touched, they'd have been gone. Yeah, that's and, uh, right. They had... We, I was watching them in the warm up. You could tell that they were faster. And I said, I told my son, I said, we better watch this. And sure enough, they came around the end a couple of times. They made the first touchdown. And oh boy. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I hear you, Carl. Hey, I appreciate the phone call, Carl. It's always great to catch up with you. Hope you're feeling better, and uh, we'll catch up with you here for the next uh, UTEP game. Let's keep things moving. Ronnie is next on the phone lines, 915-505-6009. Everybody's bracing themselves for the Ronnie call. Ronnie, what's going on, man? How are you? I love your enthusiasm. I'm on the East Coast. <laughs> it's almost 2 a.m., and I'm fighting sleep just so I can uh, talk to you. Ronnie. I love you. I love your I love your enthusiasm. Man, Ronnie, I love you hanging out with us at almost 2 a.m. And you're, you're waiting for Minor Talk, ready to go. Uh, Ronnie, you tell me, you thought UTEP would win this game. We were talking before uh, this one actually kicked off. You picked UTEP to win this game. 
I did. I actually put money on YouTube too to cover the spreads. It's like I never do that. Oh but, man, I'm sorry, yeah, Ronnie. Okay. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's it's all right. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and keep bashing Demo. I mean, it is what it is, man. I mean, the only thing I can tell Demo is whatever plays you got on that cue card, throw it the fuck away, man. Because clearly not working. Like you can just shred that thing. You can just shred that thing and just start going playing Madden pretty much at this point. I mean. You're going to struggle to win games, man. Like, this is a tough stretch. I think I got them losing to Mexico State, like I told you. It's based off coaching, emotional game. I don't know. I mean, my thing is, we're at the point where Demo's been here now. These are his guys. The last caller just said we've done a really good job of keeping some guys. Well, you should look at that the other way. Maybe you should have let those guys go, man, because you need to upgrade to certain spots. You know, like, I don't. I don't think at this point now this is solely on demo. I think I think the players we want to give them a pass because we're minor fans, but these are grown men that are on scholarship, and we got to call it like it is, man. Like this roster needs to be rebooted because we just aren't good enough in any phase of the game. Can you say UTEP has a definitive advantage over their opponent? Now on the defense, on the offense, not especially. There's, there's no phase where you could say they're clearly and better shoulders than their opponent in this phase of the game. Uh, and, and that just comes down to the players, you know, Will. Um, two callers ago, the guy said he thought that Demo lost the locker room. I said that two weeks ago um, because of who you're playing at quarterback, you know. And, and, and like, that's what I'm saying. Like, at, at some point, you know, the when guys lose faith in the quarterback and then your play caller happens to be your coach, that's a slippery slope. And that's why most coaches traditionally – don't do it that way, you know, because it's like the the players are like, well, I'm going to, you know, start to not buy into this guy's message preached in the locker room. And I know that this guy is echoing the same message that I don't believe in. It just becomes contagious. You know, you see UTEP come down the field and they score and they answer and there's a lot of hope and they come out of halftime with a nice score. But then it's just like here comes the the avalanche of problems and, and the litany of problems that have plugged this team, you know, going back to even when they made a bowl game, right? It's just hey, the same. Hey, Ronnie, same real thing. quick, real quick. How many more games do they win this year? Uh, I, I think they're a four-win team. I think they'll find three more wins on the schedule. That's it. Man, uh, I don't know where those three wins are, Ronnie. That's my problem uh, right now is where I stand. I guess maybe you could piece a, a you know a couple home wins here or there. Maybe yeah. the NMSU game is still on the horizon for sure, but I'm, I'm struggling to lost. find a uh, couple wins. I've got to rock with Gary Kill in that situation. From now on, if you want to pick a UTEP game, this is what you need to look at. Two things. Who's the quarterback? Is he better or worse than Harson? And who's the head coach? Is he better or worse than Demo? That's all you need to know when you're going to pick the rest of their games this season. That's all you need to know. You look at those two things, and it'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. Okay. You know? I, hey. That's, that's what it is. Ronnie, uh, UTEP men's basketball practice starts Monday, man. We'll, we'll, we <laughs> we'll we flip go. the page, and we'll turn the corner to something yeah. else, right? Yeah, this is the most minor call ever, because that's what we're always talking about around this season, right? We're just like, when is there you basketball go. starting? When is when is something else starting to get our minds off this? You guys have a great evening. Go Miners. Hey, you too, Ronnie. Appreciate the phone call. Wow, that was fiery. Uh, guys, let's react. Let's talk a little bit about some of these calls. Uh, first off, I want to uh, address, number one, uh, the Gavin Hardison uh, issue right now. And the thing is, is I, I wrote this down. I thought it was a great stat by uh, my man, Steve Escajeda, who uh, told me this while we were talking uh, next to each other. 39 touchdown passes for Gavin Hardison since he started as a quarterback at UTEP and 30 interceptions. So he his interception to touchdown ratio is a lot closer than um, you know you would like as a starting quarterback. But guys, the turnovers continue with him. It seems like uh, the idea of them moving on from Hardison, that's long gone. They're, they're not. They didn't recruit another quarterback. There's no one on the roster who's going to challenge him as a starting quarterback. That's not going to happen. But what happens for the rest of the season do they just trot out Hardison every single game and they expect him to uh, win these games because I just don't think they're there I, I don't think they're going to be on par uh, early thoughts on how many games UTEP can win with all these things considered uh, we'll start with you Sal go ahead uh, how many more games can UTEP win for this year realistically just looking at the schedule um, I'd say the over um, 
under is two. I think that's right. I think two two yeah. and a half is probably right. Two and a half. Would go. you go? Would you go over or under? Do you think three is attainable? So they finish out four and what? Four and eight to close out the season. I, I think three and nine is, uh, in my opinion, just looking at the way they've played and the rest of the schedule. I think that's the most realistic outcome. And and looking at it too, FIU is is a a maybe. However, how's you tap? fared in these maybe games over the last couple seasons right and they're a three and two club um sam houston hasn't won a game yet and the only other one um that is potentially uh, winnable is middle tennessee but that's on the road in murfreesboro it's a 12 o'clock kickoff so the, those are three games that i think they have their best chance in um, in those uh, that two and a half over under and look i understand the vitriol all over this utep uh, football team right now i understand why fans are passionate and mad against this one but but, uh, but that's just kind of the bottom line. I mean, this is what's going on right now with this team. And dropping a game the way that they did today in a must-win situation just left fans uh, deflated overall. Zay, your thoughts. How many games can they win? Yeah, you know, I could definitely see them picking up maybe two or three wins, you know, definitely in between there. Um, you know, the New Mexico State game, that's that's a big – that's a must-win. I mean, every game from now on is a <laughs> must-win. But, I mean, you really can't lose that game. And um, Middle Tennessee, that's going to be a weird game. Game. Uh, they lost Colorado State today, who I just I don't think they're good at all. So uh, maybe they can pick out a, a, a road win, a weird road win, maybe late in the season. But yeah, I don't see more than two or three. It's just it's a, it's a steep hill to climb. Uh, I have loss next week to Louisiana Tech, loss at FIU, win against New Mexico State, win against Sam Houston State, loss to Western Kentucky, loss to Middle Tennessee, loss to Liberty. That's how I have it. Three and nine. Uh, early reaction, early prediction. Maybe that's a little harsh. Maybe. UTEP gets healthier. Maybe they uh, spring a surprise in the mix out of some of those. Maybe they go four and eight. But regardless, anything less than six wins is a disappointment flat out for this UTEP football team, knowing how high the expectations were and where this program stands right now in year six of Dana Dimmel at the helm. Uh, let's continue with Minor Talk after this break. You're listening to Minor Talk presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. We'll hit our legal and we'll take a regular break. Come back after this with more calls we've got keith from winnipeg we got travis and trolley dodger stay with us we'll get to you as soon as we get back from our break minor talk continues here on 600 espn el paso 600 espn el paso Welcome back. Minor Talk continues. We are presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. Want to also preview our awards coming up here on Minor Talk, our hot hand of the game, brought to you by Wind Supply El Paso. Uh, to find your nearest Master Cool dealer, visit the Find a Dealer tab at windsupplyelpaso.com. Also want to bi- uh, give a big shout out to New Start Homes. Uh, you could check out their full selection of mobile homes and tiny homes online, newstarthomes.net. Uh, our newest sponsor here on Minor Talk, Stanley Steamer of El Paso and Las Cruces. They are locally owned and operated to make it easy and schedule a cleaning with their online instant quote tool and 24-7 availability. Uh, visit their website to book your cleaning with Stanley Steamer today. Um, one more to mention, DK Allon. I might hit up a DK Allon on my way home, guys, uh, to get a, some snacks, some candy. We're past midnight right now. Maybe get my a little uh, you know beef jerky or something like that but uh, point is uh, we are actually going to be ra- uh, giving away a $25 gas card to the caller of the show thanks to DK and Alon uh, here on Minor Talk as we continue let's th- uh, let's keep things moving our telephone number 915-505-6009 everybody who's chiming in on social media my apologies we will get to you we will read your post uh, we are just trying to burn through phone calls we've been uh jam-packed since we started the show but let's just keep it moving uh keith from winnipeg has been patiently waiting on the phone lines keith welcome back to the show how's it going man uh, okay good evening um my first uh comment is uh i don't know how many people were able to watch the game on television but that is one of the most ridiculous painful uh broadcasts that i've ever witnessed like ESPN Plus, can they not get it right? 
the audio no, is they good. can't. Well, Keith, I think it's too. I actually think it's it's a hard issue at UTEP that unfortunately they're just not able to fix. Everybody's like blaming Duke Keith and Boggs and all. It's not their fault. I mean that. I, and then they're blaming us. They're in our mentions, Zay's mention, my mention, Sal's mentions, and, and I'm like, man, Keith, I hear you though because you out of towners, like especially you in Winnipeg, you want to just watch football. That's the bottom line. Yeah, it was unbearable. The second the uh, the second half was better than the first. Like it was it was it was tolerable, but the first half was just it, it sounded like somebody was talking whispering behind my uh behind my back for uh you know and then you have the commentators and then you have the screeching sound and then you have the static and it's just um it's unfortunate. I don't know how I don't I, I just don't understand why it's like that, but oh well, I guess other people have complained about that too, so I guess I'm not the only one. Um but anyways, yeah, what 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 a just a ridiculous loss. Like I don't I don't understand what what coach coach is talking about that he's competing for a conference championship and that, that that's over with. They'll be lucky to win four games. I said that after the Jacksonville State game. Um at best at that time I said five, but now it's four. They'll win four games this year and that's it and he he's done. So the only reason why I'm calling today is that and maybe today's not the best day to start this this conversation, but the future coach of UTEP. And I just want to say this, just just to get this off my chest today, because I'm just my blood pressure is through the roof. Is that you have two choices? One, you go after someone with in-state recruiting ties, um, or an experienced coach that is willing to come to UTEP, or you take a gamble like Colorado did and say, you know, who's going to bring enthusiasm to the program uh, or an innovative offense or defense? And I think we all agree that we need an offensive-minded coach. So I'm just going to drop three names. Number one, Bill Clark. Bill Clark, he's retired. I understand he hasn't coached in two years, but maybe his back injury is, is, is has healed and he's itching to come back. He did a heck of a job at UAB. Number two is Jeff – or uh, sorry, uh, Jeff, yeah, Jeff Grimes – who actually is a wow. UTEP alma mater, and and he has definitely has ties to recruiting in state, and he you know I mean this year it may not be going too well for him, but two years ago he did a phenomenal job. He was one of the ranked the top coordinators in college football, and then the other one is Will Stein from Oregon. I love what he does with his offensive packages, just fascinating. And he was also at Texas San Antonio. And so I want to drop those three names, and if anybody wants to carry carry on with those names, that's fine. But we have to start. I know it's I know it's, I know it's September, and you guys nobody wants to talk about coaching changes, but the message boards are flooded with that talk. Um, and we have to look at the future. And if I was Coach Dimmel, I would kind of maybe Monday morning realize that hey, he's done enough, and maybe no, I don't know, maybe he just makes a. Um, a deal with the um, program and just resigns. I don't know. But the future is not Coach Dimmel. That's my point. And so we have to start growing. I mean, there was a great crowd tonight. Yeah. A phenomenal crowd. And I wanted to come to a game this year. I don't. I, I just don't feel like it's, it's necessary. I'm Save your trip, my friend. Save your trip. Maybe yeah. basketball, Keith. Maybe bas- basketball. Uh, but if you're making the international trip from Winnipeg to uh, El Paso, Texas, my friend, uh, and hey, I appreciate the phone call, man. I hear how heated you are. I, I could I could hear the blood pressure through the phone, man. Uh, I just had to just take that all in and hear all your uh, coaching options out there. I mean, look, we can play the carousel game all we want, and I agree with you. I think there's never it's never too early to start being aggressive and uh, looking over to coaches who might actually, uh, you know, come into this program or, you know, maybe look to see what kind of solution there is out there. Regardless, I hear your points. Keith, I appreciate the phone call, man. Thanks for weighing in. Uh, Save that trip. Maybe basketball season, Keith, instead. Let's go to Travis, who is joining us next on the phone lines. Our telephone number, 915-505-6009 to get into the program. Travis, good evening, man. What's going on? Good evening, guys. Uh, Adrian. Hey and Sal, how are you guys doing? All of you guys. You guys hey, doing? Travis, we're hanging in, man. How are you? Good, good. Uh, what were you guys' uh, opinions on the jerseys tonight? Oh, I'm not a fan whatsoever, man. I think Sal actually was okay. Zay was not a fa- not a fan, but Sal no. liked him. Uh, well, hold on. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm putting let, words let in his mouth. Yeah, <laughs> initially I did not like them. I'm like, I don't like this pairing. 
And then once I saw it on uh, on the stream, I'm like, okay, it's not too bad. But then, you know, it's kind of like, hey, when you try a new snack for the first time, and it's like, okay, you know what? I thought I wouldn't like these at first. And then you have more than a couple of pieces and <laughs> kind of like, hey, no, my initial thought process was right. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm fake on this one. I didn't like them, then I liked them, and now I don't like them again. I don't know what's wrong with Hey, me. I'm just going to say this. I did like the helmets. Zay, are you cool with the helmets? No, not cool with the helmets. Just not all around. Not a fan. I mean, it's it's red, white, and blue, orange, camouflage. You got all the colors, all the colors. So I'm cool with the helmet just because of the idea of throwing the flag on there with the UTEP logo. I, I like that. And also, I mean, you know, of course, it's uh, in the theme of the celebration. I respect that. I I understand that. But I'm just not a fan of the camo. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We just no, had to we just no. had to go on a, on a rant there, man. No. Go ahead. Oh, good. I was going to ask you as well. Do you guys? How are you guys digging the Adidas vibe? Is it? better is it worse i mean nike what do you guys feel so we're we're split here again uh, i guess you have to do the round we have to do the round table thanks for asking questions you're allowing us all to speak here uh i'm gonna say yes i'm a fan early on there's a couple that i I've, I've kind of cringed at uh zay your thoughts on adidas so far I mean, we've only seen, you know, we haven't seen the actual orange or blue uniforms yet in person. So, uh, now I'm still, I'm, I still don't agree with it at all. But uh, I guess basketball season, that, that'll really tell me. Okay, so TBD for oh, Zay. Uh, Sal's a fan. Sal's no, a fan. I, I'm all in on, on the Adidas experiment. I, I really like what they've done. Beyond football, guys, look at the volleyball. Kids right. As volleyball well. looks good. Soccer. Amazing. Soccer looks cool. Softball's all right. So, mm. uh, but, uh, but for basketball, man, I'm excited to see what they do. Zay's just shaking his head. But Not I, a fan. But I think it's because they, they shine so bright that he doesn't want to blind himself. Checks over stripes. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean the soccer kits are, are nice, but I mean, they played against Northern Arizona. It was the same exact template, just a different color, and that was just like, yeah, that was it for so me. So you checked out. Right. Zay, Zay checked out. All right, uh, Travis, your thoughts. Give me your it. thoughts, <laughs> Travis. I was going to say, I really do love the kits for the soccer and as well for volleyball. Shout out volleyball, dude. This guy, I mean, that whole staff is really killing it right they now. They are. No, they I mean, are killing it. They're doing a good job. Like, I know we lost today to, to WKU, but, I mean, other than that, I mean, they're putting in work, man. So, yes, we're talking about football right now. This is a football game going on tonight. I understand that. But as a university, we also got to recognize that there's a lot of stuff happening as well, and we don't give as much attention to the other programs that are happening at the same time as football. So, you know, wanted to tie that all in together as okay, well. But, okay. you know, I, I, I have so far liked the Adidas look. I respect what we did tonight. Um, the flyover with the helicopters was freaking amazing. I don't know because that I was amazing. That, that looked beautiful. Flyovers. Yeah, it looked I, awesome. I think that we should have more because we have Fort Bliss. So like that's cool that UTEP has made that connection with Fort Bliss. You know, and and try to connect that community all the way together. Nine one five, the whole connection and stuff like that. But anyway, sorry about talking about that stuff. But let's talk about the game, guys. Um, hard fought i felt like i mean we were we were there we were off you know like almost in there out of there but i can say for sure that i love that we stayed in it i'm surprised that we scored as many points that we did so there's that we can take some sort of positive out of it i understand everyone's frustration we want to look forward we want to find something that's new but there was some positives we scored points you know there were some stops tonight there were some good plays that we had tonight and I think that's why El Paso showed out because we still have belief. There's a possibility that this thing can still shine. And wait, this know, season? Maybe, wait, 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 this season, Travis? Maybe at least at little points, but there was some what like a, a four and eight, a four and eight season or something like that. At least more than one win, I can say. So yeah, I would say at least four and eight. Okay, but. You know, there was some points that I could say we could grow off of. For sure, there's many more points that we want to, you know, make better. But we weren't completely blown out tonight. There's that, at least. But I can say as a pre uh, presentation from the whole university, tonight was fun, man. My family came out. It was a good time. I mean, hats off to the university for, for putting on a good time for everyone as well. And hopefully come Friday, you know, maybe we'll... Uh, Sock some people and, and get a win. We'll see.
I mean, Travis, I'll, I'll just say this. If they win next week, it doesn't change my opinions on this UTEP football team. I'm still not. Uh, look, they have winnable games ahead of them. That's probably the more frustrating thing. The most frustrating thing about all of this is because if they win tonight, they go two and three. You could talk yourself into them getting more wins under their belt with teams like uh, Florida International on the horizon, New Mexico State, Sam Houston State. We've talked about the uh, October slate that is coming ahead. But then are the come the Wednesday games. Then come possibly, you know, obviously, you know, the change in travel and, and how they have to be tested on the road and injuries that have now started to be an issue. Travis, I understand and I agree with you on the in-game experience. It looked like a great atmosphere. It looked like fans were engaged throughout the game and up until the end when everybody started to leave. It looked like the DJ was killing it out there. Shout out Jason Craig. He was playing great tunes, spinning uh, all sorts of great stuff. And it also felt like it was just entertaining college football. Like in the third quarter, I was thinking to myself, man, this is just a great football game. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of just good entertainment like this. And then it got ugly. And then it got out of hand. So that's where the disappointment comes, Travis. And I appreciate the phone call, man. Thanks for weighing in. And I appreciate, uh, you know, a little glass half full approach on, uh, you know, uh, I guess more of a somber night for some fans. Let's keep it moving. Let's go to Trolley Dodger, who is joining us next on the phone lines. 915-505-6009 to weigh in on the show. One line available. If you'd like to weigh in, now is the time to do it. Trolley, what's happening, my friend? How are you? What up, Adrian? Salve. Why can't I call you after a victory? Why can't you call I mean, me after a victory? That's my question. I want. I, I want. I want to. But I, I. This is. You guys only have one show a week, and you guys don't do minor talk after a volleyball game. <laughs> we so, should though. We should, and and maybe we will. We maybe we will if they. Uh. You know. We if, need to, man. Yeah. I'm. We, I'm, I'm, I'm. 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 You know what I am. You guys. Nice. Everybody's taking my talking points when you call in this late. But anyways, dude, oh, look, reiterate, say look, it again, say it again. It's all we, good. We we look clumsy, bro. We look dumb. We look very clumsy. There's, I understand the Hardison knock, and I understand the Dimmel knock. On third down, we had a first down pass. Uh, the pass wasn't perfect, but the guy dropped it on his shins. That you should catch it if you're a D1 receiver. And then another one, you know, it went a little bit over his helmet on third down. He didn't catch it. He bobbled it. Okay, whatever. And then also on the defensive side, we got him second and 20, second and 15, and they get a first down on a run play. Like, it's almost like, dude, you know what they're going to do to maybe even salvage a punt or whatever, but we look clumsy. And I want to use a stronger word, but, you know, I still love my minors. And they look clumsy, bro. They look clumsy. We look, we don't look like we're prepared for down and situation. Down and situation. There's nothing but miscues. And that doesn't include penalties, but miscues, overthrows, underthrows, drop passes, uh, jumping off sides. I mean, uh, it's second and 25 and the dude or second and 20 or third and 20. And the guy makes the first down on a running play. Come on, man. Like, Charlie, we Charlie, get punt, we get a punt block. Like, dude, just these are things that, you know, just secure those little dumb things. Literally, they're like. Secure that. Secure that. And we're in this game, bro. And just to- my talking points, okay? Okay, I want to fire Demo, and I want to get rid of Gavin and all this and that. And I love both of them. I was like, hey, give, give, give Demo a chance, and Gavin's a, you know, 25-year starter or whatever. But now it's just like, okay, we don't look we, – we look dumb out there, dude. We look dumb. <laughs> It's 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 uh, late in the night, guys. That's 
That's a funny call. That's a really funny call. Um, Trolley Dodger, uh, thank you for the laughs. Uh, thank you for making me uh, smile over here. I don't know why I'm smiling. I'm, I'm smiling because I'm miserable great, or something. Uh, just give the Alon gift card to Trolley Dodger right now. He's going to get some gas on us, I think, after, off that one. If everybody else is not laughing off that one, I don't know. Uh, you, you have no sense of humor or you're asleep right now. That's uh, only two options right there. That was awesome. Uh, Trolley Dodger, I appreciate the phone call, man. Uh, we got to get more sad rants from you, but maybe some more happy rants down the line. But one thing I wanted to pick apart on this one, we talked about it off air. Sal, UNLV had t- a ton of penalties throughout this game, yet UTEP was not able to benefit off yeah. that or at least maybe capitalize off it a little bit more. Ten penalties for UNLV, 95 yards on UTEP side, eight penalties, 74 yards uh, in this one. Yeah, and um, definitely seemed more costly for the Miners, even though they had two less penalties and um, you know twenty one less yards on those penalties. Because the difference is, UNLV can put themselves in a in a third and twenty. They can put themselves in a second and long, and overcome that. The Miners can't because of their their lack of offensive production. So in a way. UNLV was able to afford a lot of these mistakes, a lot of these mishaps, because even though, um, you know, that's detrimental to your game plan, they have the right play calls for it coming up to uh, to kind of counter that. I don't think they planned it that way. No, Nobody plans going into a game getting 10 penalties for 95 yards and looking foolish, but when you're able to do what you want on offense, you can afford these mistakes on the road. Uh, let's go to social media, guys. We have to burn through some tweets before uh, moving on. This is going... Uh, this is coming from Matthew Castro. It's great to meet the crew in person. So many diehard fans for UTEP. Unfortunately, Jim Center is not one of them. Dimmel is 18 and 45, and per Jim Center's and UTEP president standard, that is employable. Hashtag minor talk. Jimbo Torres, no identity on offense or defense. We look so basic. Kids ain't coming to UTEP with this. Been loyal. Always will be loyal, but bleep. That's coming from them. Um, this is coming in from Bring Back Minor Rush. We were a one point underdog. One point. WTF is right. That's coming from Bring Back uh, Minor Rush. This is coming from Joe Chacon. Bad coaching coupled with some bad throws, an offensive line that was supposed to be a veteran group, but caused problems. A defense that could not stop third down conversions. You name it. That's coming from Joe Chacon. This is coming from AA65 at A Garcia 91594. Step down, Dana Dimmel. That's coming from them. Uh, Rod Munch sends us this one here on the program. Dimmel must go. The Sun Bowl is lucky to get 10000 for the rest of this year. Also coming in on the show is Chi-Town Minor. Great for UTEP basketball starting Monday. The program that we actually have historical reason to have hope for. So when they also inevitably disappoint us, it hurts even worse. Coming from Chi-Town Minor talking UTEP basketball. This is coming from this guy at uh, Sad Minor Fan. God bless. I know Hardison is the worst quarterback in college football, but dang, his wide receivers are just as bad. How many drops tonight? Also, might as well ask Dimmel if he's going to start some new quarterback at three interceptions. But or he says, bet you guys won't on Monday. I mean, we already know the answer, sad minor fan. I mean, that's sad. That's a bottom line, man. We already know the answer. It's going to be Gavin Artisan. He's not going to make a change. Yeah, what is he going to do? Throw his four-year starter under the bus? I mean, he's. we already know he's going down. You know, if Gavin Hardison goes down, Dana Dimble's going down with him. You know, it, it doesn't matter where, what, when. You know, it, it. He will back. Yeah, him. I mean, he's not going to throw him under the under the bus and say, "Nah, you know, Kevin Hurley's going to be that guy." That will never happen. And uh, Kai Loxley struggled in his year when he was a senior, but he never wavered from Loxley until Loxley faced injuries. Uh, and Loxley came off, uh, you know, an arrest and all the stuff that he was uh, allegedly involved with ahead of the season. Yet he didn't really face a lot of uh, playing time issues other than the first game when Brandon Jones started it. But beyond that, they stuck with him they were loyal this coaching staff is as loyal to their starters as you'll ever find in college football this coming in from 915 burn one 
Every year, our expectations are low, and we still manage to get disappointed. Seriously, at this point, I feel like UTEP football is the worst football program in Division I. Nothing against the young men on the field, but you might as well shut it down and invest that dollars in the basketball program. Um, ah, it's uh, you get more money at football. I mean, that's the bottom. Line. You get twenty eight thousand at the Sun Bowl. I mean, there there are people um who are happy as, as to what happened today. Now for the rest of the season, that's well, we'll we'll wait and see. David Castro sends us this. Not sure I, how I feel about this one. We played well, but still threw three picks and didn't capitalize on key opportunities. I'm the end Dimmel is now uh, 18 and 45. A loss is a loss. I think we need a change in direction. Hashtag fire Dimmel. Joe Chacon. He says this. Um... This is what he uh, responds. He says, uh, I am like this. I'll chug a beer if we score a touchdown, or I'll chug a beer if they don't get a turnover, or I'll chug a beer if they get a first down. Uh, This is, um, he says, thanks, minors. That's coming from Joe Chacon. It's a late night for Joe Chacon. Poor guy. I feel bad for him. Uh, King Eric sends us this. Three interceptions from your fourth-year starter to a trash UNLV team is beyond embarrassing. There's no more excuses for anyone anymore if they win three games i'll be shocked uh i'll be as shocked as anyone that's coming from king eric who always sends us messages here on minor talk um guys i'll i'll survey you all the pulse of the show are you guys hanging in it's a tough one guys uh are you okay sal are you awake still we're 12 30 in the mix i'm telling you man listen as a father to a newborn baby this is nothing it's <laughs> Listen, man. I thought you were going to say, as a father to a newborn baby, I need to get out of here. That's, I thought that's what you were going to say. I'll be home in a bit, but uh, no, seriously, <laughs> as um, you know, as I'm on diaper duty, I, I deal with a lot more crap than this, so it's all good. Good man. stuff. Good stuff, <laughs> Sal. Uh, Zay, are you surprised on the vitriol that fans are giving here on the show? You know, to be honest, you know, I'm I'm in eleventh grade and I don't know what vitriol means at all. You know, maybe it might be it might be very late for me. You know, but um, I could talk UTEP football all night long. So okay, good. I'm I'm not even going to tell you. It's just bitter criticism. Bitter <laughs> criticism, my friend. Uh, that is what it means. But let's just move on. Let's go to Leon. Leon understands. He always calls us late and he kind of gives us a good uh, a late night call. And uh, really excited to hear from Leon. What's going on, Leon? How are you? Hey, Adrian. Hey, man. Uh, God bless you guys all the way around. You know, uh, staying up this late and having to uh, put up with this torture that we've been dealing with. Um, God bless you for listening, man. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So thank you. Hey, 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 um, you know, you guys do a fabulous job as well as Tysher calling a game. And um, I don't know how much more disappointed we can be. Uh, uh, Bottom line, a change in leadership is needed and wherever that comes i mean the young man at uh, texas state that i think i emailed mr center that uh, we should have taken a look at last year but amazing things going on there there's a lot of candidates i mean i think the page has turned on the demo i, I don't even know if we should say dismal area to be honest with you guys um it, it's disappointing i'm even a gavin hardison fan I think the guy throws some good passes, but tonight a couple of interceptions that were just uh, way too costly, and um, it's disappointing. I was expecting a better season. We need a change in leadership. Uh, You guys are saints for staying up, and uh, God bless you and your families tonight. Let's hope uh, the page turns soon, but you all have a wonderful evening, and uh, go UTEP. uh, Let's hope we can stay that a little bit longer. Hey, I appreciate it, Leon. I appreciate your sentiments. I appreciate your wishes to all of us here at the station. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, man. This is a shorter call from you, but I uh, appreciate it. I get, I get the sentiment. This is coming from Justin at 1997 uh, Bread. There were some positives for UTEP tonight against UNLV, but overall a bad night. Giving up 45 points at home to UNLV team is pitiful. It looks like another losing season, and I'd be disappointed if Dimmel is still around in 2024, especially if you lose to NMSU at home. Hashtag minor talk. This is coming in from, uh, let's move on from this one. I don't want to read that one. Minor Joe. 
That's the thing about UTEP. The fans that show up or pay to watch or even pay for the merch are real fans. It hurts deep when we lose and play like crap. We are not coaches, but we know what's going on. Time for a reset. Hashtag hurting right now. Hashtag minor talk. This is coming from Leo underscore minor fan. Uh, 600 ESPN El Paso. Fans show up. Using fans as an excuse is not a valid option, in my opinion. Callaway 0007 sends us this. I was very optimistic before the start of the season, and now I'm disappointed once again. I wanted Coach Dimmel to succeed and lead the program in the right direction. Maybe he'll turn it around, but it is quite a daunting task for any coach that is one and four. Um, Zay, I want to ask you this question because you were on the sideline today for us. You were taking photos. You were uh, doing all sorts of stuff for us uh, in terms of social media on the field. You got a chance to see it firsthand. What was the feel like from players, coaches on the field when adversity was starting to hit? Like, were people blaming each other? Was there nothing being said? Was it kind of, you know, a stoppage as far as what was going on? Uh, Describe the sideline for me. Paint a picture for me. Yeah, it was it was awkward. It felt really awkward being there. There was a lot of tension. You know, you could just you could feel the tension. You know, there there were some guys, especially on the offensive line, they were frustrated. It wasn't you know pointed out to anybody specifically, but you could tell you know by the words and everything they were frustrated with how the game was going. So uh, you know, one word I would say is just it was really awkward. It was it was kind of like you know is something going to happen? You know how what's going on? You really couldn't get a, a good feel of how you know those guys were. Uh, we're dealing with it. Yeah, awkward and tension and tense. I like those two words that you used right there. Pooh Bear at Devious number one sends us this. It was a good crowd today. I wouldn't doubt we lead in attendance. The fans deserve a consistent winning team. What is it going to take? Decades of futility take a toll. Hashtag minor talk. This is coming in from Tristan Pence, our man, with a double header. Not much to say about this game other than Coach Pivato's touch football game plan didn't work. Once again, UTEP ends a second quarter poorly. Something said way too often the past few years, and the offense seems to have no identity. Hashtag minor talk. He also says this. UTEP is in a must-win situation next week. The Miners have too much talent to have a season that is over by early October. Let's hope things turn around in conference play. Hashtag Miner Talk. I mean, look, the reality is there's still a chance UTEP could magically turn this season around. I just don't see it. I just don't um, have. I, I don't look at these next couple games and think that the Miners have done on the field what it takes to actually turn things around for the rest of these games coming up, even though they're winning. Winnable. La Tech, FIU, NMSU, Sam Houston State, winnable games right there. But I'm still not impressed with this offense, and I still don't have a reason why I should be picking this UTEP team, other than the fact that I want to say that this ta- that this team is talented. Beyond what I'm saying, it, it, that that's not even. Um, It has no relevance to this discussion right here. The bottom line is they're not winning games, and regardless of the talent that you have on the table, this team is not winning games. And if if, uh, that's the case, and even though you want to call these games winnable – I'm not sure if that's actually going to be the case uh, when it's all said and done. Sal, uh, Tristan Pence's point about the second quarter is something that you and I talked about over text, but it's something that we've talked about over years. I mean, so many instances, right? Yeah, it goes back, um, you know, even to the uh, the COVID years. And and before that, I mean, 2019, if we could be real, it was kind of a wash. We we know what was uh, what was going to go down that year. This team was still young and, and, you know, guys were new into the system and into the schemes and whatnot but as as time went on you never really felt that that pressure if you were a defense uh, taking on UTEP you never really felt that sense of urgency if you were watching them play I don't want to say lackadaisical um, you know thoroughly at, at times they are but either way though when there's less than two minutes you don't get that two minute offense feel and and that's been the frustrating part because we talk about that, right? How how can the miners capitalize on opportunities and, and get some points? You and I were saying, hey, are they even going to try and, and get some points to close out 
the half with a minute left. Well, look at and they did try. They failed. But you look at UNLV, right? They got they were calling timeouts just to get the ball back and try and score some points with like twenty seconds. With like twenty seconds. That's the urgency that fans want to see. Show them that you give a damn and try to score as you know as much points as you possibly can. You know, on a consistent basis, fans haven't seen that from this UTEP team under Demo. Guys, we've got trouble in Hawaii right now. Uh, the New Mexico State Aggies were up 17. I think it was 17 nothing, maybe 17-7 regardless. It's now a tie game, 17-all. Uh, so we'll keep you posted with that one as we continue in the wee hours of the night. Uh, who, who else is joining us right now on the phone lines? It's Milkman. Who's joining us next? If you'd like to weigh in, 915-505-6009. We have two lines available. If you'd like to weigh in, now is the time to do it. 915-505-6009. Milkman, good evening, man. You finally got in. What's going on? <laughs> hey, I got to tell you, this is actually the, one of the first times I've ever called, and I had to keep calling because the lines were busy. But, um, yeah, wow. What what can I say? <laughs> um Let's see. Well, so uh, you, you talked to my 90-year-old dad uh, a little while ago, Carl. So I went, I, you know, I took, I took my dad and my 18-year-old son. We went to the game, and all I can say is we made great memories, you know, watching the minors like we always do. Having said that, that's about it that's positive from this. I mean, I, I started this season before looking at it on paper. There is no reason why this team, I thought, <laughs> couldn't go, you know, eight and eight or nine wins, you know, and I am, I, I don't see them winning another game after, and, you know, and it, it wasn't just tonight, it was, it's the whole watching how they've done every game. I mean, this is supposed to be a veteran squad, and they don't, I mean, there is nothing about them that looks like they're veterans. I mean, they, they're, I, I heard you say a little while ago, and that is absolutely on the head that they are Lasted days ago. They're, they're just. They're, I never get the feeling like they're like, hey guys, we got to get this done. It's it's always. I, I don't know. I can't. I, it's almost even hard to put into words. But I think if if you know what I'm talking about, you're watching the offense and it's like, I I don't know. Like they're a step behind or something. Something that they're just not. There's no urgency ever, ever. It doesn't matter if they're 30 points down, uh, you know, a touchdown ahead, or I mean, there is never urgency. I don't see, I don't see that ever. And I, I, after the way they, I, I mean, tonight even the defense is playing lousy. It's like everything's going in reverse. I do not see another game that they that they could, you know, possibly win. Uh, maybe NMSU, I guess. Who knows? But uh, the way they're playing right now, I don't even. I, I'm not even counting that one as a win. But I, guys, I, I've I've been I've been giving Dana Demel a, a you know a, a fair shake. I think, especially the last you know few years. I'm done, man. Like I, I of course I'll still be a minor fan. Of course I'll still you know we'll still go to the games. But there is there is no excuse. There is no excuse for what we've seen. I mean, this is. I, I'm I'm floored. I'm flabbergasted that like it, he goes on the the talk show after the game and he's he sounds like well you know it was, it was a fun game to watch and he does this every single time. It's like do you have any idea what you're putting the fans through? Those of us who are loyal have been loyal for decades and you're out there you know laughing about it like it's it's a you know it was a fun game to watch. My son heard his comment on the radio and he's like did he just say that? It was a fun game to watch. I was like, yes, this is this is what we've been putting up with. Like, I, guys, I'm done. I, I don't I don't know what else to say. I, I I I cannot put up with this. Like, of course I'm going to watch it. I'm a minor fan through and through, but I'm sick of this. I, I can't I can't take this anymore. This I I, I, I can't I, I just cannot take it. It drives me crazy. Milkman, it drives us crazy too. And the thing is, is his first comments were talking about how the goal is to win a conference championship and there's things that they've got to fix. Well, my thought is the goal to win a conference championship is week zero. At this point right now, your goal is to keep your job uh, if you're if you're Dana Dimmel or try to steer the ship in a positive direction where there's any sort of uh, momentum going into next year. Uh, Dana Dimmel, let me just be real with everybody. 
everybody. I, I want Dana Dimmel to be successful because A, he's a genuinely good person. B, he is he he genuinely wants to win here at UTEP. And C, if it doesn't work and Dana Dimmel does not pan out here at UTEP, then on the flip side for all of this, you know what that means? A rebuild. That means it's time to tear down the house and build it back up again. And how many minor fans want to be sold on another rebuild or another reset of the program? And you know what? Fans who like Milkman who've reached their boiling point, that's all they're looking toward right now. That's the light at the end of the tunnel to just say, hey, let's have a reset. Let's have a, something different. Whether it's you know a younger coach, somebody uh, chimed in with uh, examples of the Texas State coach and G.J. Kinney. Uh, we've had all sorts of examples thrown our way here throughout the show. Point is, if you're a UTEP fan, you want this team to be successful. You don't want to root against Dana Dimmel uh, per se, but you also want to be realistic for next year. They're going to lose 11 guys to graduation. They have 10 guys who are juniors right now who are eligible to be graduate transfers and leave the program. So if there's ever going to be a changing or a passing of the torch or a changing within the coaching staff, it would make sense on paper in 2024 for that change to happen if they are not successful when this season is over. But hanging over all of this is the realization that a rebuild might might be on the horizon. Zay, do fans understand what that really means? Because uh, a teardown process and a rebuild means struggle. And it also means losing seasons uh, to start things off. Now in the transfer portal era, guys like G.J. Kinney have shown us that Texas State has a quicker curve to get to that success uh, successful point. So maybe it's about, uh, not necessarily about the timeline, but about who you hire. Um that, that being said, I think it's just, again, it goes back to our discussion. This is a very difficult job here at UTEP, and it's a historically bad football program where it's really an uphill battle to win games here. Yeah, you know, you talk about rebuild, and, you know, that that's a tough... You, nobody wants to be going through a rebuild, but does anybody want to be in year six of a coach and then you start off one and four, losing, you know, by how much, you know, Man, good double, point. double digits at home to another group of five squad? I don't think any... I think... Fans would rather, you know, suffer losing in a rebuild, but have hope. You know, you see maybe, you know, a freshman or, you know, a newcomer on the come up. You know, I think they'd rather see that than seeing your fourth year starter and, you know, all these guys with experience struggle. I think they'd rather see that instead. And that's just the sad truth of where this program is right now and um, what hope fans have left. Sal, how do you look at a rebuild? Uh, how do you look at a rebuild as it stands? Like, do you, are you somebody who expects, things to happen a little faster mm. um, are, in today's transfer portal era or where your expectations are I, if that were to happen? I think whatever the average turnaround is for a college football team, you lessen or, or you uh, you add maybe an extra year or so just because it's UTEP. And, and I know people are Man. saying, stop settling for, for the for the least. But it's like, come on, no, seriously, who who are you going to bring? Who wants to come to UTEP in the first place? Let's be serious about that. People are talking about these these great coaches such as Grimes and, and um, you know, Bill Clark as if he would come back to uh, to college football. And I'm trying to think the other one, uh, um, Coach Stein with Oregon. Yeah, uh, that's right. Who's to say that, you know, there's a school out in the AAC who, who lets go of their coach or a coach retires and he takes takes the reins over there. I, I mean, it, that's another thing that could be said too, but I'm going off on a whole other tangent. Um, as far as a rebuild, I think if you're UTEP, that's what you're going to have to go through because it, it all depends on where you're picking up from where the last team left off. And looking at it right now, the trajectory of this, 3-9 and nine is, is probably uh, the most likely scenario in my opinion. You're doing a complete rebuild off of a three and nine, whereas opposed to a nine and three team, coach leaves. You're doing a rebuild. You're not too happy there, right? 
Correct. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. And hey, guys, I mean, we're not even at the end of September yet. So I, I have to remember uh, that. I have to remind myself that. Fans continue uh, need to continue to remind themselves that. So we still have a long season ahead for the good or the bad. If this turns real south, then I mean, we'll be here every single game all the way up till senior day. And if it turns around, then we could be talking about a historically good turnaround, a great turnaround. But I don't know if I see that actually happening happening let's keep things moving on social media and by the way our telephone number 915-505-6009 thank you to milkman who chimed in on that uh on that uh discussion and call that he had on his side 915-505-6009 our telephone number to get into the program 600 espn el paso on social media and wherever you're online as well kevin is chiming chiming in on social media right now 915-505-6009 nine to get into the program utep football desperately needs a gj kinney like coach to come in and take over the program due to single-handedly changing the culture of texas state football who was bottom barrel in fbs since entering into it in 2013 it's true Texas State was a really bad football program. In fact, really, really bad. And they look uh, changed early on into this new tenure for G.J. Kinney, which is pretty impressive right there. Uh, this is coming in from, oh, man, we I just refreshed the page and uh, like a million other tweets came in. This is Rip City Trades. Not sure UTEP can afford it, but Graham Harrell would be awesome. Hashtag minor talk. This is coming in from J.K. on the show. Can we put Will Stein at the top of the head coaching wish list time for Jim center to get back to his Rolodex and compile a list of candidates need a splashy hire to bring the program back to life. Hashtag minor talk. This is coming in from Paul Reynoso. Is it basketball season yet? Mm, Still in my tweet there, Paul. I hear you, man. Um, This is coming in from uh, Augustine. I've said it, and I've said it five years ago. Coach Dana Dimmel has to go. Hashtag minor talk. Woo, man. Some brutal calls and uh, some brutal ones here for sure. Uh, Let's do this, guys. Let's take a timeout. Let's turn the page. Let's look look over to next week, and uh, let's start winding things down here on the show. We got awards to hand out. We also have some uh, more calls to get to and more uh, posts to read here on social media. If you want to duck in a late call, 915-505-6009 to get into the program. 600 ESPN El Paso everywhere online. We'll be back after this, presented by the Oscar Idietha Agency. More of Minor Talk coming up on 600 ESPN El Paso. 600 ESPN El Paso. All right, welcome back. Minor talk winding down here. If you'd like to duck in a late call, give us a call. 915-505-6009. That's our telephone number to get into the program. 600 ESPN El Paso everywhere. Social media, online, 600 ESPN El Paso.com. And our podcast channel where you can check out our podcast and uh, download Minor Talk. Subscribe, listen wherever you uh, listen to podcasts on demand. Rate and subscribe, review, do all that fun fun stuff for us on minor talk we always appreciate that and uh really appreciate everybody's coming out to the district today that was a lot of fun we had the pregame show sal was out there for the first time what do you think sal there was a lot of fans out man. there it was overwhelming at points i was like man we got oscar we got david we got otis frazier stopped yeah. by jason craig stopped by it was it was really cool we had a great uh showing out there just from the uh from the acoustics of it i'm like how how do you guys make this work <laughs> it was a little bit windy. The music was blasting, but you guys sounded great, man. That that's the amazing part is, uh, you know, seeing everybody go out there, you know, hoping for a, for a minor victory. It's the minor faithful that that show up there and, and have a good time. So all seriousness aside, when it comes to events, that's a fun place to go to, man. Definitely check it out. Yeah, most definitely the District West. They're gonna have all the NFL games tomorrow as part of Sunday Ticket, and they have ninety nine cent wings every Saturday. So join us next time at the district we'll have a watch party ahead excuse me we will have a tailgate party ahead of utep la tech next friday 
So mark your calendars four to six next week during Sports Talk. Uh, we'll be out there for the district. Uh, also want bi- to give a big shout out to 915 Tours. David and his team were out at the district for our event. They are setting up all the Cowboys trips from El Paso to Dallas. And uh, you can watch the Dallas Cowboys with 915 Tours. They, they help you out. They hook you up with round trip travel on one of their luxury coaches, their travel buses, a hotel stay at the Omni Las Colinas, an all-you-can-eat and drink tailgate ahead of the uh, uh, the Cowboys game, and uh, they have an upcoming home game against the Patriots. You can learn more on Facebook and Instagram at 915 Tours. In fact, you can reserve your ticket and your seat starting at just $250 with 915 Tours to go see the Dallas Cowboys. Um, guys... I think it's awards time. Um, I think the awards are going to be difficult, but let's let's push through it and let's do the best we can. I'll ask you guys for reactions, and uh, let's do it right now. First off, our Stanley Steamer Steamroller of the game. This is going to go to somebody who steamrolled uh, players on defense. That is Tyrese Knight. 15 total tackles, 13 solo, including two tackle for losses, uh, tackles for losses for Tyrese Knight and a quarterback hurry. Uh, the steamroller of this game is UTEP linebacker Tyrese Knight. He absolutely balled out in this one in the loss to UNLV, but still 10 total tackles. At the end of the first half, he was just flying everywhere on defense tonight, guys. Any problems with Tyrese Knight as our steamroller of the game? Not for me. Not for me. Win, lose, or draw, Tyrese is going to have a great game. What do you think, Sal? You know what? I think he's a guy who um, has an impact for whoever's in front of him, for sure. A guy that we could be seeing playing on Sunday. And um, in all seriousness, no matter however the season finishes, he's going to be getting his numbers to uh, stock up on that uh, on that draft film. Hey, by the way, big shout out to Stanley Steamer of El Paso and Las Cruces. They're locally owned and operated and a brand new sponsor here on Minor Talk. They proudly provide p- professional s- uh, cleaning services here in El Paso and the surrounding communities. Since they started back in 1947, Stanley Steamer has served homes and businesses across the nation and across El Paso. It's been trusted by generations to clean your carpet, your air ducts, your hardwood, uh, your hardwood, your tile, your grout, your area rugs, and more. Stanley Steamer technicians are professionally trained and certified to deep clean your space using their powerful equipment, their proven and reliable process, and their family safe cleaning solutions. Give them a call. 915-591-2905. That's 915-591-2905 to schedule a cleaning with the Stanley Steamer of El Paso and Las Cruces. Let's uh, switch gears. Let's go over to our hot hand of the game. This is presented by Wind Supply El Paso. Guys, offensively, hot hand of the game in this one. I got to go Torrance Burgess Jr. What a game he had. 19 carries on the ground for the Miners. uh, Almost 100 yards, but he did have a touchdown in this one, along of 18, and he also so had three catches for 30 yards, so over 100 yards of all-purpose offense. Torrance Burgess Jr. quietly becoming the more rel- the most reliable offensive player for UTEP and maybe their best skill position player, at least today. Uh, with the absence of Deion Hankins, with no Mike Franklin in the mix, they and no Tyron Smith, by the way. He was out in this game as well. They needed somebody to step up. Torrance Burgess stepped up in a big way. He is our hot hand of the game. Game. Guys, you good with that one? Torrance Burgess, your thoughts on his performance so far uh, into the season? Go ahead, Sal. Yeah, I think he was electric, a guy who was um, able to uh, provide some of that east-west type of running that the Miners have been looking for. We, we're used to seeing kind of power um, running from UTEP. Now, don't get me wrong. He's not afraid to, to go in and bulldoze his way for some extra yardage, but I think that quickness, that jolt of speed is definitely something that they've been lacking, you know, the last couple of years. 
Jose? Yeah, you know, I think he's quickly, if not already, be becoming, you know, the best weapon on this team. Your go-to guy, you know, if you need a first down, you just can hit him on a screen. You know, you need a couple of, you need a, a positive gain on first down. You know, you could just give it to him, let him, let him slash the tackles. So, uh, no, no complaints for me. Uh, Master Cool is uh, the uh, the place that you got to check out with Wind Supply El Paso. In fact, Wind Supply El Paso, an official distributor of Master Cool Evaporative Cooler. And they don't want you to sweat it out while you wait for the temperatures outside to finally cool off. Each of their Master Cool systems is priced lower than the box stores. To find your nearest Master Cool dealer, visit the Find a Dealer tab at windsupplyelpaso.com. That's windsupplyelpaso.com. Finally, our drive of the game brought to you by New Start Homes. Uh, guys, there's different ones that we could pick out from this one, but I just have to go with the uh, six play, 77 yard touchdown drive that lasted under four minutes and was capped off by. A passing touchdown from Gavin Hardison to Jeremiah Ballard from 27 yards out. That was at the 11 minute mark of the fourth quarter, and the game was still in reach. 35 28 at that point. Miners had a chance, uh, but unfortunately for them, UNLV scored on back to back possessions and, or excuse me, uh, they scored right away and put this one out of reach. They went up 42 28, went up uh, two scores at that point and just distanced themselves to close out this game. Uh, but that one will be our drive of the game presented by New Start Homes. You can check out their full fleet of mobile homes and tiny homes online at New Start Homes. Dot net. Uh, all right, guys, we're turning the page. We're looking over to next week. It is UTEP taking on La Tech, Louisiana Tech on the season, uh, two and three. This is a football team who, if you asked a lot of their fans, they would feel like they've fallen short of expectations. They have high expectations around this team. Hank Bachmeyer's their quarterback, somebody UTEP fans know very well. Again? <laughs> Again. Three times. Uh, thir- third time is the charm. Right, he played uh, year one. They played against uh, him at Boise. Then they played uh, here against him with Boise as well. And this time around, he switches over, goes to Louisiana Tech. Uh, Zay, what do you think about Louisiana Tech early on? Yeah, you know, they're going to be a, a quick, high-powered offense. They're going to try to catch UTEP off guard. And, um, you know, maybe they, they haven't scored a bunch of points this year, but we know what they're capable of doing. You know, if, if you catch UTEP, um, you know, just struggling early they can capitalize on that they can run away with this one pretty fast so um you know just stop Hank Bachmeyer you know he, he really doesn't have great games in the Sun Bowl on Fridays you know as we mm. know so you know just mm. stop stop it there and um don't allow them to get any momentum quickly you know make them work for every yard they get um and control you know how quick this game control the pace of the game that's a big thing that uh UTEP's gonna need to do if they want to win so uh, for this game, if UTEP wins, does it change your opinion on this team? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think Louisiana Tech. You know, they're missing a lot of. Uh they just have a lot of holes on their team. This is a game UTEP should win, but the way that you know the past couple weeks have gone, I'm doubting that. Uh, Sal, what do you think about that? Does it change anything? Uh, not necessarily because the season doesn't end there. That's win two, and congratulations, you beat Louisiana Tech. You're now two and four. You still got a, a long way to go before you can even. Uh, even think about you know getting to 500 and you know let alone the conference championship. Speaking of that, I think Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana Tech is undefeated in conference play. Let me just take a look here. Uh, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, and yep, undefeated in in conference play. One and zero. Yep, because uh, North Texas doesn't count anymore. <laughs> that's right. That's right. One and zero because they beat yeah. Florida International twenty two seventeen. So good point, Sal. Uh, a couple other tweets and posts to mention, and then we'll wrap it up. Little King official at Little King Tunes. Adrian, you and Cappy know where I stand. Wholesale changes are coming, and they need a young smart preferably outside the program x's and o's guy overpay if you have to i can't stand this coach this team and the ability or and the abject culture of losing that festers at utep you know what festers means zay you know um we're gonna get to let's see i need a dictionary let's see festers you you know kind of i'm gonna read it again to you the sentence you tell me what you think it's it means uh i cannot stand this coach this team and the abject culture of losing that festers at utep 
you know settles in kind of uh, is that in is a that bad a, way yeah good, yeah something like perfect. that. perfect okay. you're right there right. you're right there it's like becoming rotten in a sense it's like you where know? it gets bad and it just gets worse yeah yeah shout out so my right english there. teacher yeah good stuff <laughs> manny david uh sends us this did anyone really expect utep to win this one i sure didn't i'm still thinking two to three wins at most this season hashtag back to the drawing board this is coming in uh let's see i've got a couple more oh herman flores i've i've missed a lot of herman flores uh david dimble's always like that always smiling and laughing during interviews when he's getting blown out clueless i didn't expect to win i also expected maybe two wins this season oh this is coming in from my name is jeff a late one you think utep will win a bowl game before 2099 Man, I don't know. My name is Jeff. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, they haven't won during my lifetime, my dad's lifetime. So, yeah. Uh, Christopher Carillo with this one. Once again, the UTEP football team did not show up at all. So much potential gone to waste. And I think that's how we'll close it up. A lot of things have been said and said again and said again here on this show. Uh, We're turning the page over. We are wrapping this one up. Game tied out in Hawaii, by the way. Uh, No, it's over. Oh, it's over? What's the final score? Uh, 17 to uh, 14. Hawaii kicked the field goal to win the game. Wow. Maybe UTEP can beat New Mexico State, guys. Oh, man. Battle is bad. Battle of bad. bad. Hey, uh, maybe that'll be the bottom 10 game of the year, the pillow flat fight of the year. I like this. I like where we're going. Uh, that will, that'll do it for us here on the show, guys. 20 to 17, my bad. 2017. 2017, Hawaii wins over New Mexico State. That'll do it for us. Uh, thank you so much to Sal Montes being here the entire day producing UTEP football, going to the district in the middle of producing and uh, taking care of production stuff, too, and joining me out there in the pregame show. Of course, producing the show here today on minor talk and co-hosting as always special thanks to utep zay following a great day out at high school football and football friday night yesterday follows it up by taking photos posting graphics great on social media we'll have content up on the website here soon enough uh big shout out to zay here for co-hosting on minor talk as well and holding it down and uh thanks to all our listeners out there really appreciate you stopping by the district hanging out with us meeting us in person and uh, listening in here on Minor Talk. That'll do it for us tonight. For Zay, for Sal, I'm Adrian. So long. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll be back next week here on Minor Talk, presented by the Oscar ID at the Agency, here on 600 ESPN El Paso. To Minor Talk, presented by the Oscar Audi at the Agency. If you missed any of Minor Talk, listen to the show on demand by downloading Minor Talk wherever you get your podcasts.